Stephanie. I'm the Executive Director of the Montgomery County Planning Commission. And I want to thank everyone for taking the time out of your schedules this evening and joining us for this opportunity to talk about proposed updates to the comprehensive plan for Montgomery County. And this plan, Montgomery, Monco 2040, a shared vision, was originally adopted in early 2015. While state law requires that full updates to the comprehensive plans be made every 10 years, we acknowledge the midpoint is a good time to note the changes taking place in the county and to mark our progress since 2015. Admittedly, the pandemic pushed our midpoint back just a little bit, but we're still excited to put these updates out in front of the public and keep Monco 2040 alive and relevant for its continued use in making smart county land use policy decisions. We wanna bring you up to speed on where the plan stands, talk about some of the changes that have occurred since it was adopted, and review a set of updates recommended to help guide us toward the next comprehensive planning effort. Please note that this is only one step of the process. We've also been coordinating with each of our municipalities to get their feedback on the updates and work together in order to improve consistency between the county's plan and local planning efforts and regulatory updates over the last five years. Tonight, you will hear about some of the key policy maps being updated, along with the progress that's been made in preserving open space, building trails, making transportation improvements, and channeling new growth and development where it makes the most sense. We're also updating some of the text in the plan to highlight programs and policies that have been put in place since the plan's adoption. While we call tonight's proposals a limited update to the plan, you should also know that efforts to fully update the plan for 2025 will begin as soon as next year, believe it or not. And we hope all of you will join us for that important and extensive process. Montco 2050 awaits. But before we go there, uh, we have a special guest with us tonight. And admittedly, our plan could not predict everything that would be coming our way. And of course, I'm talking about the pandemic. But we are extremely fortunate that we had the leadership of our chairwoman of the County Board of Commissioners to help guide us through with a steady resolve, desperately needed transparency, and quick decision making. Please welcome our special guest, Dr. Val Arkush. Well, good evening, everybody, and thank you, Scott, for those very kind words, and thank you to our whole planning commission team. They have done extraordinary work during this last year. They did not skip a beat, so I'm so grateful to all of you for the work that you've done, and welcome, everybody. We're so glad that you're here tonight. As you know, a comprehensive plan is a long-range plan for guiding the growth and physical development of a place. But here in Montgomery County, our comprehensive plan is a living, breathing document that we constantly refer to as we prioritize decisions and plan for the future. The county plan provides an overall land use and growth management framework for local municipal plans and provides guidance on issues that transcend local boundaries, such as highways, public transportation, stormwater management, trails, growth and development trends, shopping needs, impact of large developments, housing needs, natural systems, and economic growth. The themes of the Monco 2040 plan are connected communities, sustainable places, and a vibrant economy. Each of these themes contains goals that address transportation improvements, housing, non-residential development, open space and farmland preservation, job creation and retention, and infrastructure improvements, and so many others. Since adopting this plan in 2015, we have used this plan to guide us toward the addition of 40 miles of trails to the county trail network, complete repairs to 29 county-owned bridges, implement new road diets and traffic calming measures on important local roadways, preserve over 1,500 acres of open space, guide the county's efforts to improve our own sustainability, and initiate sustainability planning efforts in municipalities such as Pottstown, Cheltenham, and Lower Marion, and help municipalities guide new development to places where the infrastructure already exists to support them. Good planning takes a lot of work and commitment and community input. I wanna thank all of you for taking the time to join Planning Commission staff tonight to learn about the new plan updates and provide your comments. Plans are strengthened by the number and diversity of voices that inform them. And your participation helps to keep the goals of Montgomery County residents out in front of our planning efforts. So please speak up. Thank you for being here tonight. And with that, I'll turn it back to Scott. 
Thank you, Val. And I'm going to turn it over to our uh, section manager for county planning, Ann Levitt Gruberger. Hi, uh, good evening, everyone. I'm just going to share my screen. Okay, so uh, thanks for joining us tonight. I am going to talk a little bit about our comprehensive plan and the things that we are proposing to update. Uh, MACO 2040, as was just mentioned, is a, our long range plan adopted in 2015. County comprehensive plan really has three main purposes. It provides an overall framework for growth and preservation in our local municipalities. Uh, and we have municipalities with their own comprehensive plans that are uh, aligned with ours and vice versa. Uh, it addresses issues that transcend local boundaries as Commissioner Arkosh just mentioned. And it helps to guide county government actions. Um, uh, MACA 2040 has two major components. Montgomery County today, um, we're not updating this part of it at the moment. This is the element that has an overview of existing conditions, has a lot of data and maps and forecasts in it. Um, we will probably revisit this in some way moving forward, but tonight we are talking about uh, a shared vision. This is the element that has our vision for the county's goals, themes, and recommendations moving forward. I should also mention that we, we kind of take a look at the plan in a small way each year and provide an implementation update for how we have worked to implement the goals of the plan. Um, these implementation updates are posted on our website for anyone who is interested in learning more about um, some of the specific activities that we undertake, uh, not just in the planning commission, but really countywide. So the, the plan has three themes, connected communities, sustainable places, and vibrant economy, um, each of which have their own goals, which I'm gonna go into more in a moment. Uh, these themes and goals were really developed after a lot of feedback as we were putting together this plan leading up to 2015. Uh, not only did we have a survey that we reached out to the public extensively with, we had an advisory group made up of area professionals and citizens who, who helped us really shape the, the look and feel of this plan. So I'm gonna start with the theme of connected communities. Um, we are, as Scott mentioned, updating maps that are in this plan, but also adding in some information about some of the policies and initiatives that we have been implementing over the last five or so years to to give people an update on the work that we do. So in connected communities, people want to be connected and part of a broader community. Uh, part of the work that we do is to help these connections occur beyond local municipal boundaries. Uh, the goals of this connected communities theme are to encourage collaboration and partnerships among governments, businesses, institutions, and other groups to improve transportation quality and expand options for county residents and workers, to expand and connect county trails to local trails, greenways, natural areas, and parks, and to support strong downtowns and community destinations. To, um, to edit this section of, community, of connected communities, uh, we have a lot of, of really exciting work that we are doing here at the Planning Commission. We work very closely with PennDOT in their PennDOT Connects program uh, that helps local communities achieve some of their planning goals as PennDOT carries out their own work and mission. And we've done a lot of work to implement walkability and bikeability in the county. We have a walkability plan called Walk Monco and have since taken on a lot of safe routes to school projects. We have a bike plan called Bike Monco, um, and out of that have come um, bike tourism routes that we have put into place with the help of um, the local tourism bureau. We also have a low stress streets app to help people get out on, on their bikes and bicycling around the county in a safe way. We recently completed a trail access diversity and awareness study, and perhaps um, most visibly, we have a Mantra 2040 grant program where we have been um, helping municipalities put their own local projects into place that align with the, the goals of this plan. Moving on to sustainable places, 
County's neighborhoods and communities need to be sustained and enhanced in a long lasting and effective way. The goals of sustainable places include supporting a modern, resilient, green and energy efficient infrastructure network uh, to improve stormwater management and reduce the impact of flooding. Um, you'll see here on the right, um, this is from Norristown, uh, a heavy rainstorm or two uh, and some saturated soils leads to a lot of low lying areas here under the uh, SEPTA regional rail line um, to, to flood. Um, this is a real threat and, and hazard that we face on a regular basis. We are working to conserve natural resources, environmentally sensitive areas and farmland. We are providing more opportunities for residents to exercise and have healthy lifestyles. Uh, we support housing choices and opportunities to meet the needs of all people. And we are enhancing community character and protecting neighborhoods. Um, to edit MACA 2040, the Sustainable Places section, um, again, we have lots of projects to report uh, our progress on. Uh, the, the county has been very busy, uh, as was already mentioned, updating bridges that the county owns. We own a lot of roads and bridges in the county, um, many of which need uh, a little bit of help to be safe moving forward. We also put into place a complete streets policy that we will add to the plan. Um, we're updating the sewer and water maps, which we will get to in a little bit. We have an ongoing hazardous waste collection program, a, a successful and busy one at that, that operated even last year through the pandemic. Um, we'll add information about the potential for a hydroelectric facility on the Norristown Dam information on uh, flooding education and heat island impacts. Uh, we've recently started a return on the environment study and we'll have more information about uh, things like our 10,000 acres of preserved farmland, our successful Montgomery awards and an upcoming hazard mitigation plan update. Uh, next, vibrant economy. Um, this one's pretty straightforward. With a strong economy, residents can earn and spend more governments can make needed infrastructure improvements and businesses can grow. Um, the goals in vibrant economy are to improve transportation access to businesses, to encourage development and transformative investment where infrastructure already exists, to, to attract and uh, retain businesses and vital community assets, to flexibly adapt to changing market conditions and demographics and to facilitate the marketing of the county and its assets. So to edit the vibrant economy section, we're proposing a couple of updates. Um, we have undertaken a lot of major transportation projects or at least have status updates on major transportation projects that have really moved forward significantly over the last five years. These may have existed uh, as ideas or uh, plans, but for example, the Ridge Peg Corridor Reconstruction Project and the KFP Rail Project have made significant progress, and the county has completed its portion of the Lafayette Street Corridor improvements. Uh, last year, as, as Scott mentioned, we uh, were very busy through the pandemic and pivoted to react to some of the needs that came up locally. The Commerce Department, for example, provided several COVID-19 grant programs to, to assist uh, restaurants and municipalities and, and other businesses with uh, emerging needs. The Planning Commission also responded with Restart Monco, um, a guide that's online to help municipalities pivot and, and take on new ways of attracting people to downtowns and promoting open spaces and ways to get out and, and exercise and recreate while, while home last year. Moving on to proposed map updates. Um, this is a big part of our update to the plan, although the changes might appear somewhat minor and to some extent they are, but this is a big process for us. Um, these maps were reviewed by Planning Commission staff and were also circulated to our, our 62 municipalities for their input as well. Uh, the maps have also been sent to adjacent municipalities as well as school districts within and adjacent to the county. These maps were also sent to adjacent county planning commissions for their input as well. So we'll start with the growth and preservation plan. 
This is a, a map that reflects our current land use. Um, and we start really by updating the underlying layers here. The things that we are most sure about are preserved open spaces. Once those layers are updated, we're able to take a look at, at what has changed over the last five years to look at uh, the orange colors, which show where growth is, is proposed to take place, and the green colors, the lighter green colors, I guess, to say, the rural resource areas where we expect little to no growth to happen. Um, so the rural resource areas are areas where we expect to see no more than 5% of growth take place. And in 2019, which was the last year we have uh, updated information for, we're a little off that mark. We had 7% of our residential development, but no non-residential development take place. Uh, we're usually pretty close to hitting that 5% goal. Uh, these are categories really that reflect desired character of the county, as well as the level of development we hope to see take place and access to utilities. Our future land use map is more of a broader long-term view of the county and the, the level of development that we think will take place going forward. It really reflects less about land use, but more about the intensity of those uses, the function of, of these areas as well. So, and then, you know, this darkest purple, for example, in King of Prussia, um, is not so much about the use of the area, but the fact that it really is a, a regional mixed use center and attracts a lot of different uses. Um, and it has really only intensified over time. And we expect it to stay that way into the future. Uh, I am going to turn this over to Matt Edmond, who's going to talk a little bit about our transportation uh, maps here, both of programmed projects and vision projects. All right, thank you, Anne. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. All right, I see nodding heads. Excellent, thank you. Good evening, everyone. As Anne said, my name is Matthew Edmond. I am the Assistant Director for Transportation and Long Range Planning. And uh, I wanna just go over a couple of slides here real quick, show some of our programmed and vision projects and uh, the progress that we've been making on them over the last five years with our partners. So it's easy to forget just how much regional transportation infrastructure is located in Montgomery County. Just as a quick sample, we have three interstates, two non-interstate freeways, 1,100 bridges, seven, or re seven regional rail lines, 45 stations, a good chunk of a light rail line. So transportation planning is extremely important in the county. Now, Monco 2040 contains two lists of specific road and transit transportation projects. One list called Program, which we're going to get to here on the screen in a moment, is of projects that are in the region's Transportation Improvement Program, also called the TIP, which have federal and state money budgeted for them. The other list called Vision Projects is uh, those things that we'd like to move into the TIP someday. So our goal here in the next few minutes is to show the progress the county and its partners have made to date on Monco 2040's programmed and vision projects. So let's start with the slide up on the screen. These are the programmed projects. So the last five years have been an exciting time for transportation in Montgomery County. As Ann mentioned just a few minutes ago, we are fortunate that many high impact, high investment transportation projects on the books in the county have finally begun construction since Monco 2040 was adopted. So you can see them on your screen in blue. Uh, they include US 2, 2 in Norristown and Blue Bell and Montgomeryville. It's the big line right in the middle going uh, up to down. Uh, new bridges and ramps at uh, US 422 and PA 23 and PA 363, uh, all in King of Prussia. Uh, reconstructions of the 422 Pottstown Bypass, the Lafayette Street Extension Project in Norristown, and widening of the Pennsylvania Turnpike Northeast Extension above Lansdale. And that's just a sample of the larger scale projects um, that have begun construction or been completed in the last six years. These projects represent roughly $400 million of roadway investment for commuters, for freight traffic, for safety, for economic revitalization. And again, that's just the blue. The projects in pink are notable because they have the potential to go to construction or to turn blue in the next five years. But generally, almost everything that is programmed in the TIP is in design and moving forward in some way. So if we go to the next slide, those are the program projects. And next up are the vision projects. So on the other hand, like I said, we have these vision projects. Now, these are the result of a planning or an engineering study, but typically don't have ready funding, and they may or may not be in design. They are the next generation of projects that are waiting for available funding in the TIP 
or in SEPTA's capital budget. However, our partners are increasingly finding alternative ways to fund and advance these projects. This time, blue and pink are important to pay attention to as anything in color here is moving forward. Some of the more notable projects in blue or pink include the Lafayette Street Interchange, new ramps at the US 422 Santoga Interchange, uh, managed lanes on the I-76 Google Expressway, road diets, actually a couple of them in Fort Washington and King of Prussia, and various intersection realignments and improvements. Vision projects in any color here, again, are being funded by private dollars or municipal budgets or state awarded grants or external partners like the PA Turnpike. Now, I just wanna make one final note. If you've really been looking at these maps, uh, you've note that there's not much on them about transit. So I wanna just make a note about that before we move on to Bill. So Monco 2040's lists of programmed and vision transit projects are not mapped here for various reasons of efficiency, but SEPTA is actively designing most of the 14 programmed transit projects. And remember, that means programmed in their capital budget, right? Um, out of the 14 or so shown in Monco 2040, SEPTA is actively designing most of them. And they focus largely on rail station buildings and parking, along with the big regional KOP rail project. On the other side of the ledger, vision projects include passenger rail extensions to Reading and Percocet, along with more frequent service on most of our regional rail lines. There are a lot fewer vision projects than there are program projects on the transit side, but all of the vision transit projects are still aspirational. And so with that, I'll kick it over to Bill Hartman to talk about our trails. Thanks, Matt. Good evening, everybody. I'm Bill Hartman. I'm the uh, trails and open space planning manager with the planning commission. I'm going to talk briefly about our primary trail network uh, within Montgomery County. Uh, consistent with Monco 2040's focus on improving our transportation choices that Matt was just talking about, one of the plan's priorities also includes the expansion of our county trails and greenways, beginning with, as noted in the plan, completion of the Schuylkill River, Chester Valley, Pennypack, Wissahickon, and cross county trails. As Ann mentioned earlier, the county trail network is a key component of Monco 2040's theme of connected communities. Trails and greenways connect places from our vibrant downtowns and more heavily populated areas to our tranquil open spaces that exist around the county. And we strive to make these destinations accessible to everybody. Our existing and proposed trail projects fill missing links, create trail loops, and provide a place for people to recreate and provide an alternative way to commute if you choose to. One additional aspect of the county trail system that's really important to remember is its broader connection to trails in adjacent counties, as well as larger, more regional trail corridors, such as the Highlands Trail and the Schuylkill to Susquehanna Greenway. In other words, in addition to the local connections our trails provide, our trails are a piece of a larger web of trails beyond our borders. And lastly, it's important to note that the vast majority of the county's primary trail network is coterminous with the regional circuit trail network, which you may have heard of. Uh, the circuit trail network is the Greater Philadelphia's multi-use trail network. And to date, governments, nonprofits, and foundations have collaborated, collaborated extensively to complete over 300 miles of the envisioned 750 mile regional network and more miles are added to the network every year. So zeroing in on the plan that you're looking at on your screens right now, the changes to the primary trail network uh, that have been made uh, as part of this update really fall in four general categories. The first of which is the construction of specific trail segments. In other words, converting them from proposed to existing trails. And when you look at this map, any trail that's red is existing and trails that are orange are proposed. So this map shows certain segments of proposed trails that are now existing because they've been constructed. And examples of those trails include the, uh, a portion of the Pennypack Trail up in Lower Moreland Township at the northeast part of the county, this, uh, several sections of the Schuylkill River Trail in Upper Providence Township and Pottstown Borough and the Cross County Trail in the area of the Fort Washington Office Park. The second category of change on the primary trail network is the addition of trails to uh, this map. In other words, uh, trails that have been added since 2015. And an example of that is the North Gulf Road Trail, 
which is located down in Upper Marion Township. Uh, if you look at this, it's, thanks Anne, just to the right of Valley Forge National Park. This proposed trail would connect the existing portion of the Chester Valley Trail next to the numeral one over to the Schuylkill River Trail in Valley Forge uh, National Historic Park. The third category of changes are that we made to this, this plan as part of the update were adjustments to proposed alignments. These adjustments are based more on a, on a refinement and a better understanding of where trails are likely to travel. Um, these adjustments usually come from, uh, are the result of uh, advanced, or feasibility studies and advanced feasibility studies that we perform on proposed trails. So we may have a trail on here that's proposed, but after studying a little bit further, we realize that the alignment uh, is better uh, located in a, in a different spot. And so we made a few adjustments to the plan uh, in that way. And an example of that is uh, an adjustment that we made to the power line trail and an adjustment that we made to the cross county trail uh, in Upper Dublin Township. And then lastly, uh, the final category of change on this plan is just general uh, corrections. Um, sometimes there are errors on maps, and uh, as we study them, we realize that we need to adjust those. Thankfully, there weren't very many of those. There were just um, a couple, but uh, sometimes, and in a specific case, one trail was shown as an existing trail when it's actually a proposed trail. So we made a few tweaks uh, in that way as well. So those are the four major categories of changes to the primary trail network. And uh, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions later on, but that's uh, that wraps up my presentation. I'm going to turn it over to Drew Shaw, who is the uh, head of our environmental planning section. Well, good evening, everybody. As you heard, I'm Drew Shaw, the environmental planning section manager, and I want to talk to you about uh, something near and dear to my heart, uh, sewer and water facilities uh, provision. Uh, you heard Anne mention the theme of sustainable places in our plan. And one of the goals under sustainable places is to support a modern, resilient, green and energy efficient infrastructure network and sewer and water systems are part of infrastructure. <clears throat> Pardon me, well-maintained well -maintained sewer, water and stormwater systems protect the health and safety of county residents and help preserve environmental resources. These components of infrastructure are essential for keeping pollutants out of our streams and providing water and sewer concurrently to help preserve groundwater resources. And beyond those environmental uh, benefits, they provide a foundation for economic development. By planning for the provision of water and sewer service, we can encourage and guide development to areas where it makes sense and away from rural resource areas where preservation, open space and low density development uh, is, prefer is preferred. Higher density residential development and office commercial industrial development is appropriate in areas in the county and it supports our economy. And you don't always think about it, but those types of development rely on public water and sewer systems. So it is important to maintain accurate maps where sewer and water service is currently available. And you can see this map that Ann put up <clears throat> of our existing and future sewer service areas. Uh, just very quickly, the, the um, kind of coral color is existing sewer service area and the pink is a future service area. And, and if you wanna just bump to the water map. The water map is similar. Uh, we have a light blue area for existing water service and a dark blue area for future water service. And the lines maps uh, were service areas provided by the sewer authorities, municipalities and water companies get digitized and compared to our growth map, the growth and preservation uh, plan map, the future land use plan map uh, that Ann mentioned, and where development that could require public water and sewer service is anticipated and appropriate, those areas are identified and are added to the sewer and water service area maps. And lastly, we compare our maps with municipal and regional comprehensive plans before uh, finalizing those maps so that we try to get as much consistency as possible with all levels of planning. And these maps represent our policy for water and sewer service provision. And we use them internally during land development project reviews. Uh, they're also used by uh, developers uh, and the municipalities as they plan uh, for their future. Uh, I could go on, but I'm going to turn it over to uh, Anne uh, to wrap up. 
and you're muted. Uh, I do that way too often. Um, that, that is all we have really to tell you about tonight in terms of what we're anticipating that we'll be updating in this plan. Um, we are on schedule, I believe, to have the commissioners adopt these proposed changes at their July 15th uh, commissioners meeting. But before that, if you have comments that you would like to let us know about, you can comment online at the website that's below, www.moncoba.org slash Monco 2040 updates. Um, I'm also happy to speak with anyone uh, outside of this meeting to, to address any concerns that you might have about what we're proposing tonight. Um, but with that, I think I will open this up to any questions that people may have. I'm just curious, Anne, or whoever wants to answer this, how successful was your municipal outreach program with the maps that you sent out for everyone to comment on? Did you get a lot of good reactions and comments? Um, my colleague, Dan, was the one who handled most of those updates and maybe he he can address this, but um, I think that we we did things a little differently this time around, and you know, especially since people are are still working remotely to some extent, we asked people to look at our maps online um, and to to put their comments in that way rather than squinting at paper based maps that we had to mail out to people. But I think we got a lot of good feedback uh, on on the maps that we circulated and. And it's a, I think it's a very good way of, of getting insight into things that we may just not be aware of. And I have to say, Dan was very flexible for those of us that were being stubborn and wanted to use paper maps. He was very agreeable to supply them. Does anybody else have any questions at this point? Well, uh, it's not. I mean, that's okay. Um, but I, I will reiterate if anyone needs to reach out to, to ask questions about this content later on, um, my, my email address is A L E A V as in Victor I T T at moncopa.org. Uh, you can also contact the Planning Commission at 610. 278-3722. Um, and I'm happy to answer questions that people may have going forward on this. And this is Dulcie. I've I've one question on sewering for Drew. Oh, oh. go ahead. My favorite, you know. Um, Drew, when we have an area that is designated for future water, as I saw some areas in western Montgomery County, is is the intention that the municipalities will respond to hooking up people to public water? Because the issue of wells out here in the diabase certainly versus public water is, is a question that would be pretty fractious. Yes, uh, you're absolutely right, Dulcie. Um, at, at the same time, uh, we wanna make sure that those existing individual wells are protected uh, as other development occurs that might be using uh, water uh, supplies. So certainly when we have um, <clears throat> the, the, let me put it this way, the water service areas that we show there, we anticipate rather than uh, using groundwater, will tie into public uh, water companies systems. Uh, and, and therefore they won't be drawing up groundwater uh, and if they were connected to public sewers, that would mean the, pub, the groundwater after it was used would be sent uh, possibly miles away to a treatment plant and then discharged into a stream. So you're not getting any groundwater recharge. So the idea for those service areas, those proposed service areas are to protect the groundwater resource and to encourage the provision of uh, public water supply and extension of public uh, water systems when development is proposed. Uh, it's not necessarily an indication that you know, we want, we're going to be knocking on your door and saying you need to connect your public, your private well to a public system. 
you know, but a lot of these areas are, are also um, contiguous or overlapping with our conservation resource areas. That's right. And there's very That's little, there, the development there sometimes has been limited due to the inability or the, the, um, the extreme measures you have to go to to get uh, sewering and, and water. So That's certainly, yeah. The, the cost of, of blasting, say, for example, to, to provide uh, lines to an area through a diabase region is, is extremely uh, high, and, and, and uh, that can preclude uh, development. We just want to make sure that when development does occur, uh, you know, the provision of water and sewer occur in a logical way, uh, we recommend concurrently, so that existing resources, existing users are, are, are preserved. Thank you. Yeah. And I just want to um, remind folks that in the program, um, once they get a chance to look at the maps, maybe online, we do have information on all of the speakers to be contacted if you're looking at a specific map and have any questions. You know, I'll, I'll step out on a limb too, just following up on what Rita said. Um, there are specific things that we are identifying and updating in the comprehensive plan, but there were quite a few other topics uh, such as stormwater that uh, were mentioned, but we're not necessarily doing an update of a map uh, for this update. If you have questions on those, uh, feel free to contact uh, me, or if you have questions on other transportation projects, I'm sure you could contact Matt, for example. We're you know, we, we love talking to the public. Um, for those of you not uh, looking at the chat, uh, Scott's been posting some good information there and urges you all to join us on June 30th for our next Planning Smarter event, which I think is gonna be a good one really on emerging challenges in our communities. We'll have short presentations on a variety of topics and I encourage you to, to check it out. It'll be on Zoom, um, so you can, you can watch from the comfort of your own home. Um, and Anne, did you cover uh, just the rest of the process for the comp plan update? Uh, we're currently you know, accepting comments and will there be a public hearing on, uh, anticipated for July 15th at the Board of Commissioners meeting, is that correct? Yes, I did mention that. Um, okay. Ah, as predicted, my cat wants to be a part There's of the show. Cat. <laughs> I failed. Um, well, Scott, maybe I will turn it back over to you to say uh, a final few words. I'll very few final words. Thank you, everyone, <laughs> for coming out. Um, I, I guess uh, you know if, if anything occurs to you, uh, feel free again. Take the time to to send us any any comments. Uh, uh, over the next two months. We'll be uh, grateful to listen to them. And like I said, keep staying tuned. Uh, you know, we'll be uh, uh, embarking on our next conference plan effort uh, in 2022, which is very close. Um, and uh, looking forward to that. Uh, it's an exciting time. So thanks again for coming out tonight. Really appreciate everyone uh, joining us. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> All right. Good job.